What's up all you cool kids? This is Daisy Collins of StormyRose.net coming at you live from my craft firm here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And today, as I do Monday through Friday, I go live doing junk journal related things and crafts and things like that. So if that's what you're into, do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do post a new video pretty much every single day. So as the title of this uh, video, why do I have a border? Hang on, why do I have a border? I don't have a border. Sorry, I'm using new software and it's giving me a border and I don't know why because I don't want one. Anyway, so <laughs> now it's gone. So I'm going to be making a junk journal from this little golden book right here called I Can Fly. I thought the cover was a really cute color. As you guys know, um, till further notice, uh, mustard yellow is my color. So <laughs> just so you know, that is the color uh, of me right now. It's what I'm feeling. So I felt like this cover uh, could use some like pinks and some blues. I should have included some yellows in here, but that's fine. So today that's what we're going to be doing is working on the cover. It does take a minute to prepare it. Um, to be ready to become an actual junk journal. So here we go. I think my screen is a little bit, a little bit dark. Hang on one second. Just a little bit. Maybe we can brighten it up just a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's fine. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> Hi, Turquoise Dreaming. Hello to Shelly B. Hi, Kristen. And hello to Just Judy Crafting. Hi. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, all you cool kids. Okay, so the first step to this um, is going to be taking the cover apart. Uh, and it's pretty easy. All you have to do is really literally pull it. <laughs> pull it, and then the cover comes right off. This cat, what are you doing? Sorry, my cat's all over the place right now. He doesn't know it, but he is getting a new cat bed. So I'm excited about that. I will keep these pages here. Um intact so we'll work on that probably tomorrow but for today we are uh preparing the cover so now that we have two pieces here well you can see the book is two pieces with this tiny piece of golden tape in the middle and so we're just going to go ahead and cut that apart and what we do need to do is we need to remove this staple that's right here that is something we need to do. I need like a, a stick of some sort. Hang on a moment. I have a stick nearby. I must grab it. Okay. So I have this pokey tool that I got this at, I think Michael's or Walmart. I don't remember. And I don't, I don't know what it is. So sorry. I cannot tell you what it is called. Oh, wait, I'm going to cut this off anyways, right? I'm not going to use that this time. I always have this, like, should I use it? Should I not use it with these tabs right here? Because you could, and I suppose they would be not bendy. No, I always cut it off. So, <laughs> so you can feel where the paper is right here. This is another piece of card stock right here, or chipboard, I should say. And you can feel where the cover ends because there's nothing here. You see this piece right here? I'm trying to show you. There's literally nothing going on right there. So where I just cut is just paper, and you can feel it. And you can visually see the crease right here. Okay, I went on a whole shopping spree, and I was also sent a bunch of little golden books last year. So I think it's time for a little golden book junk journal collection. So we'll be getting that going soon. I need sand paper. I really need to adjust my workspace because I have to get up to get everything. Oh my goodness, where is the sand paper? You see, this is why I don't clean because then I can't find nothing afterwards. I had the smallest piece of sandpaper. Oh my god. <laughs> I just don't see it. So we'll have to do this another way. Okay. And that that is brownie, so I think that's brownie frosting, so very 
very safe work environments here. I'm just going to be a little extra. And you can still see the crease here, the extra paper I need to cut off. I'm just going to use my little rotary cutter. And I'm just going to cut that off. I really wish I had sandpaper, but what are you going to do? doesn't have to be perfect, so it should be okay. So let me do this one next. And definitely having a rotary cutter is a really good idea, um, even for junk journals. Now that I have it, I love it. <laughs> if you don't want to buy that expensive rotary cutter that I have, which I still use, you can literally just buy a rotary cutter and a cutting board. Okay. That one actually came out a lot better than this one. I think because this one, I don't know. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm trying to get this. Okay, there we go, there we go. See, now we got all cardboard. Okay, so now we got our cover done. Um, we need to cut some car chipboard, chipboard. I need chipboard. And oh. there it is, there it is. Okay. By chipboard I mean I use cereal boxes. So I have these cereal is that um should be on not autofocus because that gets on my nerves. Sorry about the autofocus. <laughs> okay, so I like to make my junk journals with at least a two inch spine. So if you want to visually see it here, you can visualize how big your spine is going to be. Like that. Give me one second. Let me blow my nose. Oh, I have to hide anybody. Hang on. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna blow my nose on camera. Don't worry. Okay, so let me see who I haven't said hello to. It seems like it's a couple people. Patricia is here. Hi, Patricia. Michelle and Shelly. I said hi, Shelly. Deline. Hi, Deline. Kim. Hi, Kim. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, Jane. Hi, Jane. Okay, I think I said hi to everybody so far. So I think I'm going to do a two-inch signature. I do two signature. I'm sorry, two-inch spine. I do two signatures in the spine, and they tend to be pretty heavily decorated. So I think I'm going to do a two-inch spine, as I always do. So two-inch spine. Okay, that is our goal. Now I am going to use my rotary cutter. And this is a rotary cutter because it is a rotary blade there, if you can see it. This one is by Fiskars. Um, it's called, what is this thing called again? Oh, I don't even know. I haven't, I haven't looked that up in a while. Fiskars something rotary. Okay, so. I'm make a straight edge. You want your spine, of course, to be the size of your book. So let's make a little marking. Let's like get a little pin. I really need to get my tools more closer to me. I literally have to get up to get everything. I haven't laid out my office exactly how it should be yet. Okay. Right there, right there, right there. Okay. I don't measure. I don't. <laughs> I don't measure anything. I'm terrible. I went to go buy curtains the other day. I didn't even measure the curtains, and they were wrong. So <laughs> I like the element of surprise. Okay, so we want two inch spine, and I'm gonna actually want two pieces of chipboard that are two inches. One piece of chipboard kind of makes uh, for a soft spine, and I prefer a more rigid spine. So, that's it. Boo-boo! This boy is playing... Okay, so my, my little almond milk. 
My little almond milk comes with the little, you know, little, um, this little cap thing you have to take off, like you unplug it. And this boy loves playing with that. So that's what he's playing with. But he's like running around the house, <laughs> chasing this thing. Okay, you guys. So next step, once I find my brush. Where's my brush? I knew where it was. Where is my life is a mess right now, you guys? Oh my god. Where is my brush? The good one. The other one is covered in black paint. <laughs> Wait, there it is. I found it. Yay! Okay. And my glue is on my desk, my other desk. Oh my god, you guys. Jeez. Get it together. Okay. So I have the two spines, and normally I would scratch these up with sandpaper, but I don't know where my sandpaper went. I only had little pieces of it, and it has disappeared. <laughs> so now I gotta go buy more sandpaper. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these two chipboard pieces together to form one nice, strong piece of chipboard. Again, you can do just one piece of chipboard, but it does make for a soft spine, as I would say. Not an official scientific term, but that is what you get. And I like to use these silicone face brushes. They're called silicone mask face brush. You can see his little tail over there. He's playing around. <laughs> um, and these just help me to spread the glue around instead of like having a brush absorb it. This is what I have found really, truly works for me. And the glue, if you guys need to know, is Turbo Tacky Glue by Eileen's. And I love this glue. I love this glue because I use it both for my covers and to decorate. So it's like pretty much the only glue I have besides uh, glue sticks. Because sometimes this is, this is a really dry formula, but it's still a little bit too wet for like pieces of paper sometimes. So. <laughs> and I'm gluing on top of parchment paper, if you guys want to know. Okay, so now we put these two pieces together. And this pretty much forms our spine. Let me get the glue off my fingers. Ah. Okay, so two-inch spine here. Chipboard uh, made from zero boxes. So just so you guys know, we're still on the same page. Okay, so next part is we need to cut up the piece of fabric that is going to join all these pieces together, right? We need a piece of fabric. Um, so for that, I am using... If I can, reach it. I'm using this fabric here that I actually quilted. So there's a lot going on. And I think I want one of these pieces here with the yellow to be in the spine. So for the, the fabric that goes on, we're basically working on the outside cover, right? So we're working on covering this part right here. Let me give you guys a visual, and I was going to show y'all. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I was going to show y'all. Does the tacky glue, like, fabric, volcano? No. No, this does not volcano when in use at all. Nope. And I always lose the cap, and uh, it never dries up. I don't know how, but it doesn't. <laughs> so to show you guys visually what we're doing right now is we're making this piece right here. This piece that is going to join the spine together. This is the last Christmas little golden book I didn't finish, but that's okay. Um, oh, and my camera should be backwards. Hang on. Hang on. I know this is kind of weird to do like mid-show, but there we go. That's actually that's actually the way I'm looking at it. But yeah, right. That's what's what was wrong with my camera. <laughs> Boo boo. You see the, the camera bulb? <laughs> Y'all can see him. He's He loves playing by that door. I don't know why. He just loves it. I'm going to give him a little space here so, you guys <laughs> so he can get his little 10 minutes of pain here. Okay, so what we're working on is this part right here. Um, 
So it's not a very, very uh, large piece of fabric. So I definitely want to make sure we get these yellow pieces of fabric in here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want at least a one inch, uh, one inch uh, piece of fabric above and one inch piece of fabric below. So just so you know. And this is not very wide. <sighs> My ruler is far away. Okay. So this piece of fabric here is about three and a quarter inches wide. So the way you figure out how wide the piece of fabric here is going to be, it really just depends on the cover. And let me show you what it depends on. So the cover has the name, right? So you either don't mind if you cover up part of the name or you really care and you don't want to cover up part of the name, such as right here. I still had to kind of go into it <clears throat> because the name went all the way up to the edge of the book. <laughs> it works for the book, but it doesn't work for me in junk journals. So that's why I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> anyway, so um, again, it depends on how much space there is between the words and between uh, the edge of the, the spine here. So where this kind of hits it is a little, well, I'm not going to put lace on this one, so it should be okay. So three and a quarter is what mine is going to be. Some of the names are a little bit more over here. Not really, though. They all tend to be like close to the left border. I don't know why. We need such a little golden book and tell them that we need them to move the title over to the other side. But anyway, so that is how you need to figure out. And then this side never really matters. So you could always just make this one as big as you want. But this is the size that does matter, of course. Okay, so now I need to cut my piece of fabric. Boo -boo. There's like a couple of bags there in the corner. And he throws his toy underneath the bags and starts rummaging through the bag. <laughs> this cat, I'm telling you guys, this cat. This cat is too much. So we want this to be three and a quarter inches long. Of course, I always like to cut this a tad bit longer just in case I mess up when I cut it down. So I'm gonna cut it to be four inches wide so I can get a nice, I wanna get both of these little pieces of, I wanna get both of these yellow pieces of fabric in the spine. So I'm gonna cut it, uh, let's see, four inches would be right here, which would be plenty of space to make mistakes. So four inches, okay. And I, I'm too cheap to actually buy the quilting ruler, so I use my uh, Sizzix, <laughs> my Sizzix uh, plate, whatever it's called. Okay, so we're going to put this fabric away for another project. I do have a quilted fabric material in my shop if you guys are interested in purchasing it. I also have um, videos on how to make it. Okay, sorry if you hear the trash man behind us. It is trash day today. So... We are going to, again, we need about a one inch space below and a one inch space above. So there we go. Now we know exactly where one inch is from the cover. <clears throat> I'm definitely actually glad I got this um, measuring board or cutting board. I never had one before, but I did start working a lot with fabrics and this is just a lot better, <laughs> a lot better than trying to cut it later. Okay, so this is going to be the piece for our spine. So let me show you guys. That is going to cover this piece right here and then a little bit to each side of the cover. And I will try and make sure that it doesn't actually... Um, cover everything because I don't want it to cover that I can fly. So it's going to have to be 
a little bit <clears throat> more over here or we're gonna have to put it more in the middle I'll figure it out once I do the next step. So the next step is we need to turn this fabric into paper like this. This is uh, the inside cover. Well, I'll show you guys how to do this in the next step. But basically, this is fabric that I quilted together, and then it's uh, on paper, basically. So that is what we are going to do next. Let me move this out of the way. You don't want to add heat to your cutting board. I, I, I hear that's not good. <laughs> you don't want to work your heating board. Okay, so, I mean your cutting board. I have this uh, this uh, desktop uh, ironing mat that is safe for me to do the next step in, which will involve an iron. What are you doing, boo-boo? He's like half hanging out in the window, half hanging out outside the window. I don't understand. Okay, so we are going to need an iron for this next step. So let me plug it in one second. Oh, I have to crawl underneath my desk. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to set this uh, to the highest setting. So it's going to be on, mine is set to linen. I don't have any water in here, and I never have, so in case that's your question, I don't have any water in there. No. Okay, so now I need to get my other materials, which... Okay. Which is... Um, Heat and bond. This is heat and bond light. You can see it on the logo right here. Heat and bond light. I can feel the heat from the, the iron. It's definitely not safe. Um, so what you want to do with this heat and bond is this is basically adhesive on a roll. So what we're gonna do, I could have cut it out with my ironing board. With my cutting board, I should say, why am I messing those up? I could have cut it out with my um, cutting board, but this is fine, too. It actually cuts just like fabric, so it, like, glides across. Well, not fabric, I guess, like, uh, like I've glided things through, like, paper. Parchment paper also does this, but it just glides, you guys. So I probably shouldn't be using these nice sharp scissors on this, but... I'm an irresponsible adult. So, anyways, this stuff is called Heat and Bond Light. It is basically um, adhesive on a roll of plastic. So, we're going to use the, there's a, like, shiny side and then this regular dull side. So, the shiny textured side is where the glue is. Let me see. Who's saying hi? Who's saying hello? Hello to Sandra. Northern Craftaholic UK. I forgot what your name was, girl, on Facebook. I know you're on my team. I just can't remember what your name is. I'm so sorry. Uh, and Jude. Jude is still here. Hi. And Sherry. Cherie. Is there Cherie? Is that Northern Craftaholic? <laughs> I'm, telling, I'm terrible with names, you guys. I'm so sorry. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to iron the wrong side of the fabric down to the shiny textured part and what we're gonna do actually to stay safe here um, okay so once you use your piece of uh wait actually i can use parchment paper i use parchment paper i use parchment paper kind of as a barrier between the material, my ironing board, and my iron. You don't want to get glue on your iron. So I will kind of sandwich it like this in between a piece of parchment paper. And then we are going to make sure that all of our heat and bond is touching fabric. So we're good here. Now let's sandwich it again. And we're going to go ahead and iron it. And you don't want to um, move the iron around. You want to pick it up and then place it. 
So definitely don't move your iron around because the glue is going to be like melted and stuff's going to be sliding around. Okay, so don't do it. <laughs> Pick it up and move it. That's what you want to do. Prepping for an ice storm tonight. Karen, oh my God. I wouldn't even know what to do. I would just call 911 and be like, there's snow. Help me. <laughs> I, would, I don't know what to do with snow. Last time I was in the snow, I literally broke down and cried because I was like, I, I feel so unsafe. Uh, it was not, it was not good. <laughs> Hi, Angel, how are you? Oh, Cherie is turquoise dreaming. Okay, I see that. I see that. I'm sorry, cat, cat's here. Cat's here. Yes, Minxie, Victoria, Minxie. Okay, yes, I'm like, I know she's on my team. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm the worst. Okay, so it takes a while to um, iron out the glue, and you want to make sure that every little nook and cranny uh, of the glue is melted because we are dealing with quilted material. There's lots of folds and everything, so you want to make sure everything is nice and glued down. Um, of course, you could just use regular fabric. Um, I wouldn't say use paper. I don't know how to do that, but I this is the method that I do for this. Okay, so now that we got this done, we actually want this to kind of cool down because it is hot. So I just, you could wait <laughs> or you could move it around like this. Just move it. I like to let it get cold. Okay, so if you were to peel this off when it was hot, hot, you would have molten glue all over the place like this. I got a little too impatient. And you can just scrape the glue off the parchment paper and use it again. So that's what we're going to do for the next step. So now, see, you can see the fabric kind of bulging at certain places. So that means the glue is not entirely melted. I am putting my iron there on top because I know that part doesn't have any, um, any glue on it. You definitely want to make sure that the glue is nice and melted. And if you don't think it is, do it again. You will, you want your fabric to be flat, not kind of bubbly. If it's kind of bubbly, that means you didn't um, iron out your fabric onto um, the heat and bond perfectly. So here is an example kind of, of where I didn't do it right. You can kind of, um, ah, over here. You can kind of see the bubbles and it doesn't feel like it's all laid down and flat. And over here, it's all nice and flat. Don't burn your fabric. <laughs> and all here, it's nice and flat and glued down. And over here, it looks bubbled up. So I need to, I need to redo that. So now I think it's good. Again, I'm going to let it cool down. Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. How is Phyllis today? I gotta be careful of my iron. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. Now, where the if you are doing the quilting material where the folds are, it will look a little bubbly. But that's okay. Everywhere else should look flat. Let me do this one again because I don't think this one is flat exactly for how it should be. One moment. Again, I'm using this on the highest setting. Maybe your iron gets really hot. Mine actually doesn't really get the hottest. So I always have to um, put it on the highest setting. And I have to leave it on there probably a couple seconds longer than you would have to. I guess it's an old iron. I don't know. It's a hand-me-down iron. Okay. So now let's look at a little bit better for me. Okay. So, back to the spine piece that we're doing, that we're actually working on. We are going to basically like a big old sticker, just peel off the adhesive that is now on the back of your fabric. So now there's a, a layer of glue on the back of your fabric. And you're going to be left with, if you buy this roll right here of five yards of heat and bond, you're going to be left with five yards of this stuff right here. 
Um, it's basically plastic, like shiny plastic. This side is like non-adhesive. You can use this to paint. You can use this to put glue on top of, to glue things over, and then toss it before you just throw it away. I'm telling you, uh, this is not a very good uh, product for the environment, but <laughs> you can reuse the stuff a couple of times. So I like to kind of peel off the little bits of extra glue that are um, on the sides here. And now what we're going to do is, like I said, we need to turn this fabric into paper. So now all we've done is made this fabric adhesive. So <laughs> let's add this to paper. So the next step is to adhere this fabric piece to paper. And the type of paper that I'm using is packing paper. And you can get packing paper at Walmart in the moving section. That's where I get my own. Maybe some other moving companies have their own packing paper. You could use whichever brand of packing paper you want. So you could also use tissue paper. Um, however, I use packing paper because instead of tissue, because tissue is very transparent. And sometimes when you use like white fabrics and you're covering a book that maybe uh, you're trying to cover up with the fabric and so you don't want the book color to shine through. Some book colors are a little bit crazy. So if you were to back this fabric up on tissue paper, you would be able to see through the fabric if your fabric is kind of light. So you definitely want to use packing paper or you could use tissue paper and paint your book. That's an idea. I don't want to do that step. So I just put my fabric on packing paper and this makes it the fabric that is very clear basically makes it tra uh, translucent, not translucent, opaque. <laughs> it makes it opaque so that way you don't have to worry about the book color shining through. Um, and in some cases it matters and in some cases it doesn't. For me, I just, like I said, like to take that extra step and use this packing paper. And it's really cheap, it's probably like $7 for a pack of packing paper and it'll last you quite a while. Um, if you make junk journals, it'll last you quite a while. Um, so I really, really uh, have liked using packing paper instead of tissue paper. Okay, so now let me make sure, see right there, the glue is not melted correctly. So let's keep adding heat. Oh, who else is here? Who else is here? One-legged witchy woman. Hello. <laughs> Love your screen name. Hi. Love it, you guys. You can hear the trash trash machine, trash car. What, what are they called? Trash men? Whatever. <laughs> in the background, it is trash day here in my uh, condo complex. So they're doing their job. Okay. Okay, so now we are all good. We are all glued down. Okay, we're done with this step. So I am gonna turn off my iron. Let me unplug it because it still stays hot even though I unplug it. I mean, turn it off. I don't know. Okay, so I'm putting that away. I am putting away my heating pad, although it still feels like it might be too hot to put my cutting board on here. Oh, let's see. I don't, I really just don't want to jack up my cutting board. <laughs> like, honestly. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. I forgot I had the camera on me. Okay, so <laughs> I got my cutting board back out. And now. You need to cut this into straight pieces, basically. You want a perfectly uh, straight piece of uh, fabric. So let's make this our straight piece. If we can't actually, hang on. Actually, hang on, I gotta take this out. Otherwise, I can't see. I can't see if I'm cutting it straight or not, right? So cut that out. Now, 
Like I said, I'm going to try and even it out. I know that this edge is part of the packing paper, so I know that that is straight. So I will use that as my straight edge here. And I used to cut this out with my uh, Fiskars cuttery, my Fiskars rotary cutter. However, it's actually so much easier to do it this way. So much easier. Okay, so now we want to cut this right here straight. Again, I know that this part of the packing paper is straight itself, so I'm using that as my straight edge. And we'll go there to right there. Of course, nothing in junk journals has to be perfectly straight, so don't freak out if it's not exactly straight, straight, straight. It's okay. Wait, I don't know what I'm looking at. Hang on, hang on. I'm looking for the the dot, and it wasn't on the other side. <laughs> so I freaked out. Okay. There's the dot I'm looking for there, and here's the connecting dot right here. And, okay. And now I've moved it. Okay. And okay, and okay, and okay. Okay, so now we got two straight edges. Well, that one's not so straight looking. Hang on. This part is literally going to go in, in the book, but like inside the book, you won't even be able to see it, but it just like visually bothers me. <laughs> just like visually out Okay, so we want this to be three and a quarter inches wide. And I make this bigger than that because sometimes I mess up, girl. Sometimes I mess up. <laughs> sometimes I mess up. And so I give myself a lot of room to make mistakes. <laughs> That's why, just being honest here. Okay. And now we even this part out over here. Again, both of these parts are going to go inside the book itself. You won't even see them, but I still like to even them out because I'm just a weirdo. Just I'm just like that. Okay. And actually, this I would not throw away because this piece right here could be used in a journal itself because it is paper. It's literally paper, so I can use this on a page or something. Okay. Uh, see this? This is literally just a strip of paper now, so that's exciting to use later. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so now you have this piece of uh, we have this piece here of fabric, and now we need to join our cover together. Uh, we want this to be on this side, actually, and we want this to be on this side. Yep, because this is the front of the cover. Okay. <laughs> so now what we need to do is we need to figure out where exactly... Um, we are going to place this. So this here should be placed in the middle, obviously. So I'm going to do my best to place this in the middle. I'm obviously going to eyeball it. So, and we know we need to leave an inch above and an inch below. So using the measuring board actually kind of helps me know where they need to go. Okay, because again, I don't measure anything. I'm a terrible adult. And so I don't measure nothing. <laughs> Let me get my parchment paper. My gluing parchment paper here back. I might have left this glue on with, without a cap for a tiny bit too long. Because now it's taking forever to come out. Hang on. I need to... Oh, oh, oh. Where's that pokey stick thing? There it is. Okay, I just need to break through a layer of dry glue. And now we're back. All right. So using the same glue. 
And we're using the same brush here to move our glue along. Again, these are called silicone face brushes, face mask brushes on Amazon is where I got them. I would leave the link, but it's okay. It's actually, uh, out of all the links that I left on YouTube, you know, of all the stuff that I use, uh, <laughs> these, uh, these brushes are the ones that I've sold most. <laughs> I've convinced most people to buy these brushes. <laughs> these are great. Okay, so now, again, I'm going to need a, about an inch above and an inch below. So, that's kind of how I'm figuring this out here. I don't, I don't, I don't measure. Maybe you could measure, maybe, maybe your life would be better than mine. Maybe. But that's all I'm doing. Getting this glue off my fingers. It's the worst part. It's the worst part. Thank you, Jude. If you guys haven't joined our Facebook group. Okay, right here. You don't have to, it's a little extra, but I have this little, what is this called, Brayer? Yeah, I, I don't think it's Bayer, because Bayer is a medicine company. <laughs> so this is a Brayer. And it's basically, you know, just to drive all the little nooks and crannies and to the glue, make sure everything gets a nice uh, adhesion. I think that's the word. <laughs> I believe that's the word. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to sew on this. Yeah, actually, I'm not gonna be able to do my fancy sewing, but I could do still the edge. Let me, hang on. I forgot to do this part, but it's okay. So what I like to do is because this is quilted material, as you can see right here, there's little pockets that are not adhered. So um, to make my life easier, I will sew just this edge right here and this edge right here so that way we don't have that material hanging there and let me change out my sewing machine thread to one that matches I'm going to use this really pretty blue that I have actually and it goes with the cover so let's take this out give me one second and grab the thread Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Okay, here it is. I thought this color, which is also what I'm doing for the inside material, it's going to be a really nice co color with the cover. It's there, there. So I figured this color would be really pretty. I used it for my last drunk journal as well. It's just a really pretty, happy color. So, one second, you guys, and just load this machine up. Right here, down, up, around. I still have to talk my way through, <laughs> through uh, threading this machine. <laughs> still not exactly sure of the steps. So, I, it's like tying my shoes. I walk myself through it. Okay, turn it on. Okay. Okay, thread it, and now we are ready to go. So, I'm just going to use a regular zigzag stitch here. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just going to use a regular zigzag stitch here. And I'm literally just going to sew down the edge of both sides here. I normally do a fancy border, but I totally forgot about that. Totally forgot. And I'm just using default settings. I didn't change anything. The inside cover has all the the pizzazz, but that's okay. What's up, Boo Boo? Why you cry, Boo Boo? Why you cry? Huh? <laughs> Okay, so now, I shouldn't have done that part, whatever. Anyway, so 
we have our outside uh, spine figured out. This is basically what the spine is going to look like with this on this side, of course. Um, but I'm excited that I was able to incorporate these two yellow colors right there. So the cover, the front of the cover is actually going to be on the left-hand side. The back of the cover is going to be on the right-hand side. And now we need to add blue. need our parchment paper, which I will not fold in half and use the other side to glue on. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay, so we got our glue here on this side. Looking good. And now what you want to do is if you do have the option, maybe you have a little golden book that you don't exactly like the cover. Pull it apart so that way you can use it for this next part, which I didn't. So I'm going to do it another way. So um, what I'm talking about is this part right here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use something that has a nice thickness. And actually, this cover is actually the perfect thickness for this, but I don't have a cover that to use right now. So I'm going to use... <laughs> I'm actually going to use this plate right here, and I'm going to use this plate to kind of keep uh, like the same width, right, the same width as a kind of acting like a board. Hang on, I'm holding it with my chin. <laughs> holding it. So that way we can have two pieces with the same uh, thickness of a border, right? That's the point here. We have the same thickness right there. And again, you could use uh, another one of the golden books that you don't like to do this in. That's the back cover. So now we're doing the front. That's a little bit too big of a gap though. So now I'm just eyeballing. Hang on, hang on. I'm going to use the inside of the book here. Oop, oop. So again, you want to have the same thickness on both sides of the book. So there, that's better. That's much better. So smaller gap. Okay, so now we're going to do this um, on this side. This one I might have to eyeball. <laughs> because I don't have another golden book cover. So spread the glue. And you, if you do so, you want to make sure you get um, the glue in between all of those stitches. And sorry, I, didn't, I forgot that I tilted my camera. Okay, so we're well, actually, oh yeah, okay. I'm like, did I do that wrong? Did I do it wrong? And this time I am actually trying to eyeball it. Which is fine. <laughs> In my book, eyeballing is just fine. Okay, right there. To me, that looks pretty even. That's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tuck this side in, right? That's what we're going to do. So we need to tuck this side inside. We cut these threads. I don't like threads myself. Even if they're not going to be visible to anybody, they just bother me. <laughs> okay, so we got our glue in here. Okay, so now this is what we fold inside. And actually, actually, what you want to do is you want to cut a little triangle right here, right where the edges are going to meet, right where the spine would fold is what I'm trying to say. And I do this to avoid bulk 
right here at that very spot. Sometimes with the two layers of fabric that we're going to add on top of there, it does get a little bulky. So I cut out these little V shapes right here. So you can see it avoids bulk right here in the corner. And we do the other side as well. I'm going to cut out a little V. That went a little bit too deep for my taste. <laughs> And you can eyeball it or you could glue it down and then pull it apart like I did on that side. It just kind of eases the bulkiness of the fabric that gathers there, I found. Okay, so glue. Glue, glue, glue everywhere. And now we pull this out, pull this up, pull this up. There we go. And now, wow, I don't know how I got glue all over that. I'll have to clean that up later. But now we have our spine. And now we have our two-inch spine. Ooh, that looks pretty. Yes. Be careful with all your glue. Oh, my goodness. Hang on. Hang on. Baby wipes to the rescue. <laughs> Baby wipes will wipe off all the glue there. There we go. I don't want to make a mess. I'm trying to be make a clean, professional journal. <laughs> and I could have done some fancy sewing on the cover on the spine there, but I totally forgot. I don't know why I totally forgot. It just blew, it just went through my mind. I didn't even think about it. Okay. So now we have this beautiful cover, which looks gorgeous. Now we cleaned up the glue. Woo! Baby wipes to the rescue and they'll get the glue all off your fingers. <laughs> so this is great. <sighs> Let me see what everybody else is doing. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. Get all this off. Oh, okay. Now I feel much better. Kristen. Hi, Kristen. I don't think I said hi to Kristen. Okay. So, now that we got that, let me tell you about the inside cover because I've already pretty much made this video about an hour long. So the inside cover, we basically do the same way as we did this. It's fabric, heat and bond, and then um, packing paper. And this one, um, I cut up to be eight inches long. It's actually... Might actually be two other oh, sex. Oh, it's okay. Normally, I make it to be exactly the same size as the book. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, smaller. But that's okay if you can see a little bit of border. I'll live. I'll live with that. That's fine. So normally, like I said, I cut it up to be exactly the size of the book cover. In this case, it's not, but that's fine. This is eight inches wide. If you don't want it to uh, cover this up right here, you can probably make it. If this is three and a quarter, <clears throat> I'm going to sit here and pretend I know what that is. Okay, so bigger than three and a quarter. And so that you don't cover this part up right here, you can make your inside cover to be about four and a half inches wide. Four and a half inches wide would give you enough space on both sides to still leave this little golden book belongs to. So I might redo this. Um, you'll find out tomorrow if I did. But basically, it's the same steps, like I said, fabric, heat and bond, and then packing paper. And then I just did a little extra sewing on there, really. And I could probably cut this down and still sew on the edge, and it'll look fine. But anyways, that is today's video. We will come back tomorrow, where I will be probably putting together the signatures that I'm going to be doing. I need to sew um, some fabric trim on there, so that's what I'm going to be working on tomorrow. If you guys want to join me for some more fun, uh, come back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is when I go live. And we will be working again on this junk journal. We'll be working on the inside. Um, so thank you guys so much for following along with me. And I will see you guys in part two. Let me say goodbye to everybody that was here hanging out with me. 
Uh, I'd like to mention everybody, it's going to take a minute. So thank you so much to Shelly B. Thank you so much to Sherry, Kristen, to Judy, just Judy Crafting. Thank you to Patricia, of course, the coolest of the kids. <laughs> uh, Delene was here. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Donna Le Levi. Nice to see you, girl. I hope your little golden book goes great. But it's always good to watch a lot of tutorials before you actually do it yourself, of course. Jane, Kristen, um, Northern Craftaholic UK. Uh, she said, <laughs> Donna, thank you so much to Crafty AZ, Shabby Shack Jude, of course, for your help. Thank you. Uh, Donna, thank you to Kat. Thank you so much to who else is here? Who else? Uh, Queen City Arts Karen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you to Sandra. Thank you to, let's see who else. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm moving it along. Phyllis. Sad artist is Sandra. <laughs> Craft a one-legged witchy woman. Love that username. Gotta love it. Thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me today. Kathy D, hello. Uh, let's see. Marianne, Craft Design. Hi. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me. And I will see you guys here, Lisa. <laughs> I will see you guys here for part two. Bye.